Today's Mass Readings and Gospel Reflection November 26, 2022 Saturday The 34th Week in Ordinary Time We bless your name, O Lord, for sending your own incarnate Son to become part of a family, so that, as he lived its life, he would experience its worries and its joys. We ask you, Lord, to protect and watch over this family, so that in the strength of your grace its members may enjoy prosperity, possess the priceless gift of your peace, and, as the church alive in the home, bear witness in this world to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. First Reading a reading from the Revelations to John. Revelations chapter 22 verse 1 to 7. John said, An angel showed me the river of life giving water, sparkling like crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the street. On either side of the river grew the tree of life that produces fruit twelve times a year, once each month. The leaves of the trees serve as medicine for the nations. Nothing accursed will be found any more. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will look upon his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. Night will be no more, nor will they need light from lamp or sun. For the Lord God shall give them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of prophetic spirits, sent his angel to show his servants what must happen soon. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the prophetic message of this book. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm Psalms chapter 95 verse 1 to 7 a.b. Let our response be, Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the tops of the mountains are his. His is the sea, for he has made it, and the dry land, which his hands have formed. Maranatha! Come, Lord Jesus! Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are all the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. Maranatha! Come! Lord Jesus. Alleluia. Luke chapter 21 verse 36. Alleluia, alleluia. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you may have the strength to stand before the Son of Man. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus. Gospel reading. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 21 verse 34 to 36. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life. And that day catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, please hit the notification bell, so you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video. The Reflection on Today's Gospel 
We are reaching the end of the long apocalyptic discourse and getting to the end of the ecclesiastical year. Jesus gives a last piece of advice, inviting us to watch and to pray. Attention to not lose conscientiousness. Watch yourselves or your hearts will be coarsened by debauchery and drunkenness and the cares of life. And that day will come upon you unexpectedly, like a trap. For it will come down on all those living on the face of the earth. Jesus had already given similar advice when they asked him about the coming of the kingdom. He answers that the coming of the kingdom will arrive like lightning, unexpectedly and without warning. People must be attentive and always prepared. When the wait is very long, there is a risk of not being attentive and not paying attention to the events of life. The hearts become coarsened by debauchery and drunkenness and the cares of life. Today, there are many distractions which render us insensitive. And the news, TV, internet, and other propaganda can ruin our perspective on life. Being far away from the suffering of so many people in the world, we are not conscious of the injustices which are committed. The converse of this is also possible. The speed of communication today through satellite and internet can overwhelm us with bad news and cause anxieties, fear, and worry and disturb our peace. Prayer, the source of critical conscience and hope. Stay awake, praying at all times for the strength to survive all that is going to happen, and to hold your ground before the Son of Man. Constant prayer is an important means to not lose the presence of spirit. We must deepen in our hearts the knowledge and awareness of God's presence among us. In this way, He gives us the strength and the light to bear the bad days and to increase our hope. Summary of the Apocalyptic Discourse We have spent five days, from Tuesday to Saturday, meditating on and deepening the sense of the apocalyptic discourse for our life. All three synoptic gospels have this discourse of Jesus, each one in its own way. Let us try to see which version the Gospel of Luke offers us. Here we give a brief summary of what we have been able to meditate on during these five days. The whole of the apocalyptic discourse is an attempt to help the persecuted communities place themselves in the overall plan of God and in this way, have hope and courage to continue on the way. In the case of the apocalyptic discourse of the Gospel of Luke, the persecuted communities were living in the year 85. Jesus speaks in the year 33. His discourse describes the stages, or the signs, of the realization of God's plan. In all, there are eight signs and periods of time Jesus describes up through our time. Reading and interpreting there lives in the light of the signs given by Jesus. The communities discovered how the execution of the plan was to be found. It was thought that the first seven signs had already taken place and that they all belonged to the past. Especially in the sixth and seventh signs. The communities found the image or reflection of what was happening in their present time. The following are the seven signs. Introduction to the Discourse First Sign The False Messiahs Second Sign War and Revolutions Third Sign Nations which fight against other nations A Kingdom against another Kingdom Fourth Sign Earthquakes in different places Fifth Sign Hunger, Plagues and Signs in the Sky Sixth Sign Persecution of Christians and a Mission that they have to carry out Seventh Sign Destruction of Jerusalem Arriving at the seventh sign, the communities conclude, we are in the sixth and seventh signs. So this is the more important question. How much is lacking until the end? Anyone who is persecuted does not want to know or hear about the distant future. He wants to know if he will be alive the following day or if he will have the strength to bear the persecution until the following day. The response to this disturbing question comes in the eighth sign. The eighth sign changes in the sun and the moon announce the coming of the Son of Man. Little is lacking. All is according to God's plan. And all is like birth pangs. God is with us. It is possible to bear all this. Let us try to give witness of our faith and the good news of Jesus at the end. Jesus confirms everything with his authority. 
Jesus tells us to watch out so as not to be surprised by news or events. How do I live this advice of Jesus? How do I balance being aware and compassionate in my larger local community with the constant TV and internet reporting of injustice and disasters in real time from all over the world? The last warning of Jesus, at the end of the ecclesiastical year is this one. Watch and pray at all times. How do I put into practice in my life this advice of Jesus? For Yahweh is a great God, a king greater than all the gods. In his power are the depths of the earth. The peaks of the mountains are his. The sea belongs to him, for he made it. And the dry land, molded by his hands.